God bless you today and welcome to our program that we call Coming Home and where you get to hear stories of how God changes lives today and we believe that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever and he changes lives and today you're going to hear an amazing story of Brother Scott and he's here with us today and thank you for joining us Brother Scott and, and uh, I guess we'll just get started right into it and tell me, uh, I know God brought you from amazing places so I'm excited to hear about it today so why don't you tell me a little bit about yourself. Well, thanks for having me, uh, Brother Jonathan. It's, it's a pleasure to be here today. And um, you wouldn't think so now looking at me, I suppose, but I was, uh, I was in a bad shape. I had real long hair and piercings were all over my face. And you can't, of course, see the tattoos, but I have seven or eight or so tattoos. And, you know, I was just, um, you know, I guess my parents did the best they could as far as raising me. Um, my mom was in uh, her first divorce when I was two years old, and um, I, I think later that played a part in, in my life. And um, so as life, you know, as you have your normal childhood, that kind of thing. And I, I think looking back, um, of course, there was always cigarettes or alcohol laying around, that kind of thing. And my mom always has little stories about when I was just even a small child, picking those up out of the ashtray, or your uncle would give you... A, um, a drink of beer or that or that kind of thing and I, I suppose even even looking now that wasn't so bad as, as the baddest things got uh, probably uh, 15 16 years old um, uh, one of the guys I was hanging out with brought over some crank um, some speed and and it was just a little I remember it was just a little bump on a CD case and and I was uh, not necessarily innocent, but I just had no idea what that was. And, and I had been going, I'm going through things. I was a teenager and that kind of thing. And I, and I went ahead and, and I went and, and snorted it. And that's where it took off. And it was that summer, I was 16 years old, and I went from a little, you know, $10 bump, and I was already into, you know, using needles and um, always smoking weed and, and uh, drinking beer. And, you kind of, maybe for those that are watching, can understand that you have your occasional smoker, I guess, or your, your, your weekend or evening person that would have a drink. And I, I was the guy that really kind of took it full board. I'd wake up and start drinking. I, I would wake up. I wouldn't wake up unless I had some kind of uh, drug for the day. And, and that's just how it went for a number of years. My mom, um, bless her heart, she... she uh, she had her second divorce when I was 18 to my stepdad. My stepdad and I, we really never did get along, suffered through a lot of uh, uh, physical and, and, and you know, abuse and, and you know, the, a lot of the excessive whippings and that kind of thing. And, um, and then I, I just started noticing that these this different drugs and the stuff I was partaking in, it just, the joy, I guess, I could only reflect back to when I was, you know, five, six, seven years old, maybe playing, you know, with your G.I. Joes or shooting guns with your cousins and that kind of thing. I can only kind of sort of remember back when things used to make me happy. All of a sudden, you know, I was looking towards something that was to pacify um, or cover, uh, you know, problem, whether it be anger or, um, and I just started getting depressed and, and I was um, started having suicidal thoughts and and it just, you know, bad got worse, and I started experimenting with more drugs and, and more of what really whatever was on the table. It, it seemed like I was there, and I was open to doing it. And, and, I, and so later on, fast forwarding, I was, um, I was 18, right out of high school, and I just didn't quite know how to, I guess, get back on my feet. <laughs> um, already just a couple of years, real young, and, and things aren't looking good, and I thought, well, I'll join the military. And, and so I joined the Navy, and I went in, and um, during boot camp, everything was going good. And, um, and, and for a little while there, then I just, right back in it, you know, and started drinking and, and uh, carousing around and doing things I shouldn't be doing. And, and, and then after I got out of the Navy, I, I did, and I'll get back to it, you know, when I, when I was in the Navy, I did find a, there was a Gideon, there was a Bible on the ship. And I grabbed the Bible, and, and that's towards the end of my, my testimony. Um, didn't think much of it then. I, I, kind of, I grabbed it and I would kind of read and I didn't understand it and I would set it down and go back to doing what I'm doing. And um, I got out of the Navy and, 
And then I just, I started going into, uh, maybe some viewers will understand, uh, ketamine, they call it Special K. I uh, started getting into Special K, I started getting into shrooms and started acid and just, you know, whatever the next best, hottest, harder thing was, that's what I was trying to take and, you know, and, and, and it was always something, you know. And then, it, and then I thought, well, maybe I'll get into drug dealing, really, um, drug dealing was mainly just to kind of, uh, pacify uh, my addiction and so of course I would grow it or I would know the person that was cooking it or growing it and I would further up the top you can get as you know and maybe you don't know but you would you could get there and then you can kind of pinch that bag and that's just how things went for a good two or three four years and and still full of hate and, and all kinds of things and uh, the reason they let me go out of the Navy is uh, kind of back up is I was diagnosed bipolar uh, manic depressant, borderline personality disorder. I had drug and alcohol dependent, and I was going to rehab after rehab. I, um, things got bad, and uh, things were bad, and then I ended up getting sent to a mental, in mental institution. They, an officer in San Diego it found me running down the freeway um, without my shoes on, and I just had a shirt, and I was chasing cars, and I was out of my mind, and I was on meth, and been up for a long time, and and um, I remember coming off the freeway, and he stopped me and asked, and well, again, fast forwarding, I got sent to a, uh, it was a glass, glass tank room, it was kind of padded, and, and it, was, it was bad. It was, and, and then I was in the St. Louis Island for a couple of weeks, and they were different psychiatrists are checking me out, and hearing these different, you know, demonic powers and voices, and just different shadows and stuff just kind of bothering me, and, and um, didn't quite really know what to do, you know. You get there in life, and you're like, "This isn't working anymore." You know, you you find something that maybe will help you, and it wasn't helping. And well, when I got out of that mess and um, started just, you know, just diving in more and more, and I, just, I, grabbed, I grabbed that Bible that I found in the Navy, you know, or it found me looking back, and I was 20, I was 21 years old, I believe, at this point. And um, so just five, six years of just uh, a nightmare, a blur. What I first thought was my happiness turned out to be a very unhappy place. All my joy, um, as you will know or find out, it'll just suck the living, you know, just suck the joy right out of your life. And that's what these drugs were doing. And, and I, I just picked up the Bible and I, and I read in there. I, tried, I just op flipped it right open. And, and I'm not making this up. It's just as real. I, I was... Um, I was even raised in a different belief as I am now. Um, everything was just completely, it was a complete 180. And I opened the book to John 3.16, you know, and I, and I read there, you know, for God so loved Scott, <laughs> and that he gave his only begotten son. And, I, and that struck me. I said, well, something loves me in my condition. And that really, that really hit home, whereas before the, the, uh, the words, the letters there weren't really coming out on the page there, you know, but then they did that day. And I just believe, I just couldn't help but believe it. I thought, well, you know, he said, for God so loved the world. I thought, well, I, I couldn't get any more worldly, Brother Jonathan. And I thought, well, he's talking to me. And I thought, well, you know, I think the hardest, one of the hardest things I remember was just, I, well, I know what he did on the cross for me, but it was just forgiving myself for all the mistakes I thought, well, you know, if he could do it for me, then I can do it for me, and we'll just start a new, a new life. And God's given me a wife now of 12 years, and I have a beautiful son and a daughter, a 10-year-old boy and 7-year-old girl. And, you know, I have a, a career. I, I have my own business, and, and, and God is just good. And, and I get to help at the church I'm in, involved with now. I've been all over the country. I got to sh first share my story like this in the Philippines to uh, hundreds of high schoolers and been to the Africa and Peru and, 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 and you name it, it's been all over being able to just to share the good news with, you know, that there's hope out there for you. You know, if I, I pretty much pretty simple, if God can do it for me, and, yeah. you know, a drug yeah. addict dealer, he can do it for you. So it's been 12 years ago, you said? Well, 12 years ago, I've been married okay. and it's almost going on 15 years since Fif I've been sober. Yeah, by God's grace. God saved you from all that stuff. No, no problems with addictions and all that stuff. Or that, or got rid of it all. You got rid of it all, and you'll look at it for those that have tuned in. You know, if you're into meth or those kinds of drugs or those that ketamine and that kind of stuff, they, you know, in and out of rehabs, and that's fine. But 
it's it's just you know it's just a miracle. You know you know it's just the hand of God, Amen. and that not even not even the desire, or the taste for it. And I used Amen. to love smoking cigarettes and and doing those kinds of things, and they're just they're just gone. I used to Amen. cuss, and and it's all gone. So. Hey man, what an amazing story! And we're gonna have a song to finish our program today. But I believe these stories are real. And I you know I just maybe the Scots a minister of the gospel, and I'd like to maybe you take a moment and maybe somebody out there in a condition where they. Maybe they can't forgive themselves today or they can't seem to find, you know, their way back. And if you have anything you maybe like to tell them today and how, how God forgave you. And Well, whoever that might be today, you know, God knows your name and he knows where you're at today. And if there's room at the cross for a sinner like me, then there's room, room at the cross for a sinner like you. And just don't give up. Don't ever give up, no matter how bad it is or how bad it gets, that you know that there's something out there that can take care of you and your family or whatever it is, whether you're going through divorce or you can't quit drinking or smoking and just give it to God. You know, if you're confused or you're you're compressed, depression, that kind of thing, just 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 start talking to him. Open up your Bible. If you got a Bible or something, you just start reading. Just, just do, just, move, just make a move, you know, and, and I, I, tr I trust God will make a move towards you as well. So, Amen. Amen. Thank you for that today and sharing your story with you. May God richly bless you today, and may He be your portion. I know. 